Hey YouTube, Corpusan here. With six job coming later this year, it's important to get your characters ready. So I hope this video can be of use for you. We're going to go over where to train item progression, which systems to focus on, which quests to complete and which bosses to defeat. All the way up to level 250. This video will focus on the reboot server in MapleStory Global, so there will be no scrolling, trading or bonus potential that needs to be upgraded in this video. But before we dive into all of this, today's video is sponsored by none other than Raid Shadow Legends. Yeah boy, Raid is back with another killer update. Raid is all about collecting heroes, upgrading your team and building the right team for each challenge, be it dungeons, missions or clan battles. Plus there is a special code for new players, if you use the code JTSKIN you will get the stack knight for free, plus there is a special skin that is designed by Jontron. This code can be used until October 7th. And don't worry, if you're not a new player, you can still get the stack knight and the skin through an in-game event. And recently they've added Hydra Clash, a new clan based competition where you and four other clans see who can hit this Hydra boss the hardest. This boss has different hats, each with their own unique set of strengths and weaknesses. For example, the Head of Blight poisons your heroes and clouds you in a poison mist, causing your attacks and debuffs to miss. But he's weak to fire, so you can defeat his head quickly to make the fight a lot easier. Or the Head of Mischief will yonk your buffs if you're not careful. Don't feed the snake and deal as much damage as possible against this formidable boss. If you're ready to spice up your life with some Raid Shadow Legends, scan the QR code to get a free starter pack containing some epic loot. And don't forget to use that promo code JTSKIN for that Stack Knight skin. Many thanks to Raid for sponsoring today's video and now back to the video itself. Now trading to level 200 has been done to the death on this channel, so we're starting at level 200 in this video. I won't be explaining all the systems in detail, like what is star forcing or what is cubing. If you're just starting out, do not watch this video, instead I recommend watching the beginner guide video if you want to tackle those subjects first. So for starters, leveling wise, make sure to do your daily quests in the Arcane River. Each bigger area has their own unique daily quests that give a ton of EXP. The weekly quests in the same areas can also provide a lot of EXP and both reward Arcane symbols. The various weekly quests all have their own mechanics, like collecting ingredients in a race against time, a hide and seek game, running away from this annoying purple spirit, defending a castle and playing Gunbound. Reaching higher levels and unlocking new areas reduces the amount of daily quests that you'll get, saving you a lot of time. Same for the weeklies that can then be completed instantly as well as increase the amount of symbols that they give. The daily and weekly quests in the Arcane River will provide you with a ton of EXP and both reward Arcane symbols which you'll need to deal more damage against the monsters here, so definitely do those every day. You also want to clear Monster Park every day to work towards a very good medal, but also to get Monster Park coins. These are used for EXP, attack and weapon speed potions, which are great for grinding faster and a special pendant that increases item drop rate. Monster Park also gives a good chunk of EXP and it's highly recommended to clear it at least twice a day or even more if you purchase Monster Park tickets in the cash shop for Mesos. So you can level up slowly by doing your dailies and weekly quests and Monster Park. That's what I did for most of the last month. Some events like the current Wong restaurant also give EXP that you can use or you can go and grind of course. As general tips for grinding, always use Monster Park potions, any EXP buffs that you can get from events, event stores or the Legion store, get MVP buffs from other players, fame someone sitting on the level 250 or 275 chair for a damage buff and use any guild blessings when possible or just stand in an MVP area and usually those will be constant anyway. When you're grinding there are four different factors which are important. First one, can you one shot monsters? The monster level the burning level in the map and how many monsters you can defeat per minute. Some maps might have more monsters, but if the burning is lower or your class isn't very mobile, it might not be the most efficient. You can always use the battle analysis to check which maps will work best for your character for your class. And one final tip, if your arcing force isn't high enough, you can add some additional points to your arcing force to your hyper stats to make up the difference. So where do you actually grind? Well, between level 200 to 210, train at to below the cave map or one of the other cave of repose maps if those have higher burning. Completing dailies, weeklies and monster park will give you a ton of EXP at this level, so make sure to do that. And also make sure to complete the reverse to the quest line once you hit level 205. The maps nowadays there are not that great for trading after spawn boosts have been removed, so I highly recommend to just stay at below the cave or any of the cave or repose maps. 
Once you hit level 210, train at the very first map in Chuchu, the Below the Falls map. I personally like Dealer Bobber Forest 1 and the map at the bottom right, Slurpy Forest Depths. It's pretty good as well if you don't want to move that much. It's not super crazy, but you know, lazy grinding is nice. Once you hit level 215, unlock Yum Yum Island and then go to Hidden Iliad Field. This map is pretty popular though, so you might have to see a couple of times to find an open one. Once you hit level 220 in Lachlan, I really liked Revelation Palace 2 or Rev 2, but my favorite maps are in the Clock Tower, where you can simply jump down and just keep attacking and then use the teleport to get back to the top again. It's very simple and pretty fun. The map with the red dancing shoes is also really nice, but this map usually has lower burning because it's very popular, while no one grinds in the clock tower maps. At level 225 we trade in Arcana, and then we go to the map where water meets sunlight. That one is pretty good. The Earth Spirit map is great as well, that one is a few maps to the right, but it's usually either taken or has very low burning. I also trained a bit at Thundercloud Clearing. You can stay here for a while, if you want to. I stayed here until I hit level 232 and then I went to beneath the spirit tree. In this map you can keep going to the right and then jump down to be teleported back to the top left again. At level 230 you'll also have unlocked morass but most maps aren't that good. If you don't deal enough damage yet to one shot the monsters beneath the spirit tree just stick to the earlier maps. Around level 235 you can also head to any of the shadow maps in Morass. The abandoned areas are also pretty solid. I really like the second abandoned area map. If you can, around level 238 train at the Mirror Touch C maps. I actually just continue to do my dailies to level up. If you're a bit weaker you can easily stay at beneath the spirit tree until level 240. Hitting level 241, I started training at Plunging Depths 3 in Celes, as most other popular maps like the Final Edge of Light 5 had low burning. This map is very solid for my class as I have good mobility and it was there where I grinded until level 250. So leveling is pretty fast these days, which is great, but reaching higher levels is just one part of growing your character. There are a lot of ways to get stronger in MapleStory and some have a higher priority over others. The speed that you're growing your character with though, that depends on a lot of factors. Like for example, I was getting my first app slap gear just 3 days after creating this character. But that's only because I took 3 days off to grind, have almost 9k legion and all link skills and funding available, you know. And if you have even more resources or carries available, you'll progress even faster. Or you'll progress slower if you have less. So because everyone is at different stages of the game, I want to give more general advice that could hopefully apply to everyone. There are about 4 ways to get stronger in MapleStory besides leveling. And that's through node stones, through getting gear and upgrading said gear, and through the many other systems in the game like legion, link skills, familiars, traits, etc, etc. So to break those down, first let's talk about node stones. Node stones are used to level up your 5th job skills. Each class has their own boost nodes, which are composed of three different skills. There are your fifth job skill nodes, which are unique to your class, and common skill nodes, which are unique to your branch, like explorers or warriors, etc. These drop from monsters in the Arcane River, and in Grandis of course, but we're not worried about Grandis for now. <laughs> That's not the point of this guide. You can get three for free for completing the Vanishing Journey daily twice after accepting the quest, and from events. Nowadays we're getting showered with them, so you'll get most of them from events actually, and not that many from hunting in comparison. To increase the chances of finding one of those valuable node stones, you can use the drop coupons from the Legion store to increase your drop rate. Having more drop rate potential on your accessories, inner ability and holy symbol 5th job skill all help in finding more node stones when grinding. When you're upgrading your node stones, first focus on upgrading your boost nodes, your trios, boosting the right ones of course. I left a link in the video description where you can check out a useful website that has all the boost nodes for every class. After that, work on your 5th job skill nodes and lastly your common skill nodes. But do prioritize holy symbol a little bit and any other important common skill for your class. For example, vicious shot is pretty important for archer classes when they go bossing. Make sure to also upgrade your node slots and focus on the same priority as I just mentioned. So that's about it for the nodes. Gear? Gear is getting a bit more complex. Basically, I usually go from Penslayer or any other low level set like the Necromancer set, or you can even go for the Emperor set if you want to. Then you go to Fafnir, then to Absalab, and then to Arcane. But if we're just getting to level 250, we're focusing on that. I would just focus on getting the Absalab first, and then you can worry about Arcane set later. So while you're grinding, start off by clearing the Rude Abyss questline and then fight the normal Rude Abyss bosses for 5 days to unlock their Chaos versions. Also, while you're at it, fight regular or Chaos Akum, regular or Chaos Pink Bean, depending on which one you can take on, normal Acarium, 
Chaos Horntail, Normal or Hard Magnus. Hard Magnus only if you're up for that fight. These bosses drop multiple accessories that you can use to get the boss accessory set effect. You can also get a ring from the level 170 NLC questline, New Leaf City questline involving Lita Lawless by the way. Clear three of her quests to get an NLC coin to purchase a ring from this store. So defeat all those bosses to get various accessories which you will be using for a long while. I would also like to especially mention the Princess No boss. This boss requires a full quest line before you even unlock her, but she drops a Kana ring and you can get better secondaries from her. Also unlock Golex to work towards your Golex accessories. Don't defeat any body parts, just go find the head head on for the most coin drops and a chance to get one of the best versions of his gear. But if you're just starting out, maybe bring a seasonal party member if you're a bit newer to this boss. As you can only enter once a day and if you die out then that's it, you have to wait for tomorrow. Superior goal accessories are really good and will carry you towards the end game. Do not skip out on this boss. So after you unlock and defeat the kills for the Biz bosses you can get a fast new weapon, helmet, top and bottom. The helmet top and bottom you're going to be keeping for a long time, as both the Absolab and Arkin set have an overall which we absolutely do not want. Tops and bottoms get a total of 6 lines of potential because it's 2 different items, while overalls can only get 3, making them worse by default. You keep the Fafnir hat as well because of the set effect. If you are burning or there is any other event going, you usually get a Fafnir set for free. And always use the Absolap or Arcane event weapons, the ones that cannot be starred and that have fixed potential. Even if they aren't part of the set that you're currently wearing, usually their base stats are just so much better. For your gloves, shoes and cape, I usually use pants here for quite a while until I replace the cape and shoes with any superior items dropped by Heart Magnus. Never Star Force those by the way, and later replace those slowly with Absolap gear. If you want to, you can also clear the Zapangu questline to get those wings. They have great stats, but it takes about an hour to get them. And with how fast progression is these days, especially on burning characters, doing this content just for the cape is not very efficient in my opinion. Completing this content does unlock some additional benefits, like the option to unlock special skills and free access to a lot of herbs for potion making. But if you're just starting out, I wouldn't worry too much about this just yet. Make sure to also complete the Afterlands questline to get three free permanent totems. There's a way to get non-permanent totems as well from the Shanghai area, but only look that up if you want to work hours for a measly stat boost. And as you can see, I've been kind of slacking as I haven't gotten my totems yet myself. So once you have your boss accessories and Fafnir set and potentially some superior gear from Magnus, it's time to work on your next gear set. Which you can do pretty fast by defeating Lotus and Damien. You can either go solo or with a party, but your goal is to get special coins that they drop. On my solo progression accounts that I freshly start, I usually defeat them around 15k stats and with around 90% IED. But on this account, thanks to my fully built Legion, Link Skills and Burning event, I was able to do it a lot faster. Both Lotus and Damien drop those coins, which you can use to buy Absolute gear, but you also have to complete the weekly quests in Scrapyard and the Demon Camp to get another source of coins. Those coins can then be combined into a different coin that can be used to purchase Absolute gear from the stores in both areas. I highly recommend to go for the gloves as your first item. I'll explain why in a second. You need to defeat those bosses for a couple of weeks to get enough coins to buy all the Absolute pieces that you want. You want to buy the shoes, the gloves, the cape and the shoulder and of course the weapon if you don't have a fake one. Once you have the Absolap set you can start working towards clearing Lucid and Will to get those arcane pieces but again I'm not going to focus on that, let's just focus on getting Fafnir to Absolap first. Also just FYI there are some special gear requirements for Dual Blades who can get their best Katara from Commercy and Zeros have some quirks and special tricks as well. I highly recommend joining the Reboot Central Discord and then join the class specific Discord to get more advice for people who may those classes. Alright, so now that's all about it for gear and which one you should get. So let's talk about upgrading. All the upgrading and reboot will cost mesos. To get more mesos, you should defeat all those weekly and daily bosses. You can defeat Ursus during the double Ursus times, which are between 9 and 11 UTC for more mesos. Complete Maple to reach day and of course create additional bossing mules for easy mesos. I think right now the general consensus is that you can get the most mesos when bossing. You can also grind for mesos, make sure to have at least 60% drop, so monsters you defeat will always drop meso bags. And you can purchase a card that increases the amount of mesos dropped from monsters in the legion store. You can also get additional meso rates from getting the meso line in your inner ability, and familiars can help here as well. So first things first, when you're upgrading your items, get all your items then start with Star Force. 
But since you already made it to level 200, I'm assuming you know about Star Force and Potential Riot. If not, again, make sure to check out my beginner guide for more in-depth info on all the systems in MapleStory. So if you're not using any of those event apps, lab or arcing weapons, keep your weapon first as well as your emblem and secondary. You want to aim for attack or magic attack percentage and any boss damage or ignore defense stats depending on what you need. Early on, the damage line is not too bad either, but ideally you want to swap it out with one of the other stats I just mentioned. Feel free to try and get these items to legendary. The general rules when cubing is that you rank up items with bright cubes and then reroll the lines with glowing cubes until you get something nice. After that, focus on cubing either your Fafni gear if you need more damage if you can't one-shot the monsters around your level yet, or get your accessories to legendary to get meso and drop lines so you can farm even more effectively. All other gear I usually get to epic with at least 6% stat lines. Once you get your absolute gloves, focus on cubing this item to legendary first. Because this item can get the unique potential line critical damage which is extremely powerful. Which is also the reason why I recommend getting this item as your first absolute item. Slowly get your gear and accessories to legendary and roll for your main stat. Once you're a bit more geared out and easily make a couple of billions per week, you can also buy the Fairy Heart from the event stores. It costs 4 billion mesos and is very expensive, but it's the best Android heart you can get in the game. You can get an Android from most event stores. Okay, next. Please, please save all your mesos that you don't plan on spending to cube or to upgrade your symbols. Use those savings to Star Force during a 5, 10, 15 or Star Force Discount Sunny Sunday event or even better during Shining Star Force that combines both of those benefits. It will save you a lot of mesos if you only Star Force during this time and allows you to build up a few spares because items blow up more often than you would expect. Items can get huge stat boosts past 15 Star Force. Focus on Star Forcing easily replaceable gear first like the Fafnir items. Don't Star Force superior items please unless you want to see your mesos burn away at record speeds and don't Star Force your Absolute items past 17 stars. If you reach that point, focus on swapping them out with the Arcane gear. And then there also are flames. Try and get the rainbow ones from events. Prioritize your weapon first, aiming for attack or magic attack, depending on your class. Then you can flame your other gear or optimize with black flames. As a general rule, you want to have a high amount of base stats, percentage stats and attack and magic attack. Focus on high amount of base stats first, by the way. You can flame whenever you want. It doesn't cost you any mesos, just flame. So if you happen to get a few, probably from events, or you'll obtain most of them from there, you can just use them freely. And as a general rule, don't flame gear you're replacing soon. I'm just saying, you know, before you start flaming your pencil gear, don't do that. There are a ton of other systems to get stronger than MapleStory. The main important ones are Legion and Link skills. If you're just starting out, focus on your Link skills first and work passively on your Legion that way. Make sure to make use of the many level up potions and bonk pots that you can get to make this process a lot easier. And of course, make use of the crazy EXP Zakum gifts at level 100 by defeating only the arms, then leaving and entering again 30 minutes later. Besides that, there is your inner ability, which can help a lot depending on your class. Each class has their own unique wants and needs, and I usually found what I need on the Digital Crowns website. <laughs> Make sure to Google that one. There also are trades. You need to get at least level 30 charm to unlock your pocket slot. And you can use this system to get a bit more IED, ignore enemy defense, HP, buff duration, and ignore elemental resistance, which are all great to get. You can work on this slowly. It will go up kind of passively the more you play anyway. One more system that is pretty nice and pretty important is familiars. These little buggers will give you bonus IED, more drop rate or heal you during boss fights. And it's pretty easy to get a decent common or rare one with the stat that you need. You can also collect the cards from the three different monsters left of Edelstein to get your first badge, so you can equip two familiars at the same time. Badges also give stat effects. They are pretty fun to collect if you're up for that, but it's quite time consuming. Definitely do not focus on this if you're just starting out. The stat games are quite minimal for most badges. You can also focus on upgrading your familiars later. Just first get established, get that gear going, so you can start bringing in the mesos, and then you can focus on that later. And finally, you also want to work passively on your monster collection to send those away for additional trade boost items, cubes, and other trinkets. And just to emphasize, make sure to make use of all the events to help speed up your progress by a lot. And that's all I had for today. I hope this video was useful. Got any questions? Let everyone know in the comments. Thanks for watching. And as always, special thanks to our members for making these videos possible. Special thanks to Niels de Konnik, Rama Waar, Sebastian Hanoi, Jesus Rodriguez, Claudie Mora, Wiley, Riser Aryu, Backspace OTI, Ziggy Deer, History Cannon, Sophronix, Flidiot, Knifesu, Cloudfix, Sir Tito 655, 
Michael Manchaka, Raytheus, Afterlord, Betrayal 1489, Silvio Nato, Striker Elk, Tidal One Pun, Victor Sundstrom, Matthias Simonson, Mr. Anark, Ben on Games, The Passenger, Kani Wu, Max Bernhardt, Mukao 1017, BMB King, Scotty Flies Fast, Gabriel Eck, Feco, Vake Botnet, Dante Victory, Matinu Death, Snack HBG, Only, Lord Fasil, Pats D. Kaiser, That Archie Guy, Louis Bento Brandao, Snafflepop, Tails Curspet, The Wolf Drake, Gabriel Wolf, Premier Bang, Best Guild Luna, Casual Volk, Quinn, Migu, and Mark Setter. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and happy mapling. And recently they've added Hydra Clash, a new clan based competition where you and four other clans see who can hit this Hydra boss the hardest. But this boss is not an easy challenge. 